here we are in episode 33 of the Simple Success Podcast. This is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. I say that and I mean it. Positive mental attitude. It goes with money and accordingly, there's a lot of that here. When you change you, you change everything. Today is the result of what you did last month, of what you did three months ago, of what you did last year, of what you did five years ago, or in investing of what you do every week. We're trying something new here in the Simple Success Pod. Simple being the operative word. I've been focused lately on making this pod simpler too. Hats off to Steve Jobs for that among many other things. Yeah, wait, who's Steve Jobs? We'll get there. For now, simple means reducing the number of segments I have for you every week. You already know that I'm pretty good at keeping to respectful timing constraints. That was harder to write as well as harder for you to listen to, which was enough to make me change. I thought I can make this whole idea into a single story, and that will make us calm about it. Yeah, yeah, enough backstory. Okay, here we go. My motivation for doing this is as simple as the whole uh, everything. I want this podcast to be the single most captivating podcast ever. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, there's only somewhere between 40,000 and a million or so pods out there. What's the big deal about being only the best, right? Uh, Yeah, well, to get there in a reasonably sized steps, we'll start with interesting. That's our initial choice. Sure, interesting, that's easy. To be clear about that, I want to reinforce the idea, in case there was ever a question, that I am completely and always open to new things and new ideas, especially when they involve change. I will not tell you that doing so is easy. It's not, not even a little bit. Sure again, even though you told us in an earlier podcast that simple and easy should go together. Oh, just wing it, will you? Oh, way better than that. Even when the goal is big and great and beneficial all around, like this one. I've done most of these pods so far as what I call a talking head, where there's just me holding forth on an answer of some sort. But I'm looking at the idea of having one or more co-hosts, or even co-hosting myself by learning to play both characters. Like you're trying to do right now. Is that where this is going? Yep. And I've done that before with a book by Napoleon Hill. It's lesser known than Think and Grow Rich. It's called Outwitting the Devil, in which Hill has what he rightly calls an imaginary interview with the devil in order to learn how to outsmart him. That's really geeking out. But you know, somebody has to geek. It's how we get healthy choices regarding things. But it's not easy. But really, you need an example if you're going to do an evaluation of actions. I suppose you want a quick break first, right? Well, sure, but we'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective, because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us. Please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month doing level support, a $4.99 knowing level or a basic intro level of just 99 cents per month, whichever you choose. Thank you so much for helping us do this. To leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site like Video Ask, where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. You can also send us an audio file attached to an email, if you use more than your phone for stuff. Hint. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there and it's all easy. Right before the break, I started to talk about using examples to evaluate our actions. And that comes from the concept of the effectiveness of nudges. The whole idea of nudge. Oh, I really can't wait for this. What an ethical nightmare that one is. The whole ethics of nudge is quicksand. Quicksand that tastes good. Why do you say that? This is a well-known book. University professors, you know what those are? They say it can take away people's agency, their ability to decide for themselves. It's a manipulation of choice. Well, maybe, but if it's good for society as a whole, you know, like being an organ donor or something. But who decides that? Well, everyone decides that for all of society, just like always, you doubting Thomas. Hey, I am what I am. Take that, you libertarian paternalist, if we're going to call names. Oh, silly rabbit. This is not political. Let's define a few things to make this easier. For example, what is nudging? Well, as Thaler describes it himself, a nudge is any small feature in the environment that attracts our attention and alters our behavior. The nudge concept comes from the field of behavioral economics. And what is behavioral economics? 
Well, although behavioral economics is a science that has been studied for almost 40 years, it was the book Nudge, written by Richard Thaler with help from Cass Sunstein, that got people to sit up and take notice. It's why universities have behavioral economists. And what is a nudge? As Thaler describes it himself, a nudge is any small feature in the environment that attracts our attention and alters our behavior. Would you mind making it relevant for our listeners? Oh, sure, thanks. It's an inexpensive way to massively increase either the revenue of your project or at very least the success of your project. As one of the choice architects, as they're called, you're using simple behavioral design to make choices easier. This is what behavioral science is all about. By the way, I thought you were here to help me keep this all simple. Ethical issues are important, but ethics go hand in hand with success. Using behavioral economics does not prevent success. Success usually involves change, and nudging is fertile ground for that. Easier said than done, but in the spirit of a few of our forebears, we should left away and see no are. Actually, that's how all of us should act with regard to the necessary breaks we all have, like this short one. We know a lot about you already because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. The reason every podcast asks you this is because when you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And that means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Oh, and don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno. Sebo. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. There, you'll find a link to our upcoming webinar, which you'll also find on the website. Click now to register for a time that works best for you. So, let's get back to understanding this idea. The term itself came into use during World War II when British economist Richard Titmus wrote his famous essay titled, Why Nudge? Oh, where comes the boring details? Yeah, well, there's always a little. In it, he describes a system of programs designed to encourage people to make better choices in better choice environments without forcing them to do anything against their own wills. They get to make their choice in terms they are already familiar with. They get the individual choices that we all treasure. Where's that flag waving when you need it? Oh, come on. The idea goes this way. In order to reduce the resistance, which we all naturally put up to such an idea, if we only understand it in a limited way, like most things. You can think of it as a moral evaluation, but it almost always heads the default options for company 401ks. Well, let's walk through what it looks like. Oh, you mean give people a real picture? Well, yeah, what else is there? Your usual fantasy world is what else there is. Except that this is real understanding from examples which happen to real people. Whatever, go on. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, picture yourself in this meeting. Picture yourself? What an imagination which we all need and can benefit from. I said go on. Thanks again. So this meeting, somebody there, probably the head of HR or someone they've picked, explains how the whole plan is supposed to work. Now, as an experienced financial advisor, I've been in on planning meetings for this sort of thing, as well as making the choices for myself. And there are a ton of distractions which go on. And distractions aren't necessarily a bad thing in some cases, like this one. What? Distractions are always bad. Not necessarily. Not when they keep you from overthinking. Not when they get you to do the right thing for you and your family. Are you saying it's possible to think too much? That's exactly what I'm saying. Especially when it keeps you from doing good because you just think about good instead of doing it. So, the meeting. Yes. There are forms. Some of the forms have checkboxes. Some of them are questions for you. It can all seem overwhelming, especially if you think you can't make changes later. You can? Of course, just be patient and quiet for a second so you can recognize the nudge. Finally! Quiet, I said, please. Before Thaler and Sunstein published this idea and had it looked at by lots of people, including the White House, people would get this form, but it would be different. Checking the checkbox would put people in the program. Not everybody wants in though, right? Well, true, and in a few cases, that's the right choice. It isn't the right choice most of the time. When people have to check the box to get in, that ignores our default human behavior, which is... Which is what? To do nothing. Okay, so how is nudging better? 
What is the definition of a nudge? And by the way, why is it called that? Nudging is better because it looks at our behavior instead of ignoring it. Examples of nudges, smart guy. Right. Okay, you got the same form. But it's not the same. No, good call. But it looks like it's the same. And the difference? The difference is that you would have to check the same box. Or what looks like the same box. Right again. What looks like the same box. But in this case, it would be to get out. Oh, you mean an opt-out system, right? Of course, a rational choice. Who's being the smart guy now? Applying this approach to behavior change works in financial things just as well as in anything else. But it benefits from the nudging idea, which I'll explain in a minute. You mean, but first, like those ridiculous voicemail trees, right? <clears throat> Before I go there, I know that it is also important to stress, stress, and then re-stress the idea that I completely support and believe in the idea of positive thinking and especially the use of the imagination faculty that we all have in getting there. You've said that before. Yes, that's correct. I've said that before. But another example is probably a good idea here. James Allen said, As a man thinketh, so he is. And that, of course, is paraphrased from one of the Psalms and is more than likely present in one form or another in nearly every religion. If only accurate thinking were among our most cherished public policies. The meaning of that is central. What you believe defines what you can achieve. Wait, did I just say that? Yeah, I was going to ask the same thing. And that said, I'm not ignoring the fact that we all often need a bit of help in that direction. Author Napoleon Hill, in his classic Think and Grow Rich, talks about invisible counselors. I've used that idea to powerfully reinforce my vocal work, which I feature in my other podcast. Here comes the sales pitch, or what Napoleon Hill called the touch. No, no, no sales pitch, at least not this time. No, I do this at the suggestion of one of my mastermind partners, and I hold in my mind an image of a great and commanding speaker when I speak. For this podcast, I'm adding a self-imposed requirement to hold in my mind an image of a great and commanding writer. We'll see where that goes, of course, but for now, I'm happy to thank William Shakespeare for jumping into that role. Oh, nothing like picking someone easy to follow, huh? It isn't about you or me. It's about our motivations. What would be the motivations that you could possibly have for this? There are a lot. Think about it. You are going to have to retire at some point. Oftentimes, this is put forth as being something that is just a fun exercise. And I say fun in gigantic air quotes. How big is that gigantic? Focus, John. Okay, it can also be a goal. Just change the thinking. Change your approach. How you view things. Instead of asking, when can I retire? Ask, when do I not need to depend only on a single income source? Everybody has to have a job working for the man, don't they? No, try this. When can I have two or three or ten or twenty income sources? The exact number being whatever is right for me. This is the motivational approach. What you do by this is remove decision points and obstacles. Not that they're not important, they're things we all have to face, but when you remove them, you can allow for bigger things to come into your mind. Are you telling me that I shouldn't decide anything? No, I'm not. It's often put forth that people who are extremely rich have more choices in life than the average person, simply by being extremely rich. Now, I'm not going to say that being rich doesn't help, of course it does, but a basic philosophy that any of us can have, regardless of our wealth, is our attitude. Oh, the as-you-think thing again. You've got it. Our attitude can be to take some smaller problems off the table and allow bigger accomplishments. Maybe this would take away the concerns of having an income. Maybe then you can focus on getting across the Cameron line in outer space. Yeah, get across the Cameron line in space. There's your motivation. Now no one needs to feel like they have to do better without the benefit of those who went before them. Everyone instead can see the gain and begin to apply it. Let's go back to the 401k example. Without nudging, our tendency is to let other things in our lives take priority, to rank higher. Instead of thinking about retirement, we carry on instead with that feeling we all had when we were young that we were immortal. But you say you're going to live to 120 at least. Isn't that kind of immortal? Well, it's related, but what's bad about this is that we never bother about retirement. It's more important to get the bigger house, or the bigger car, or the extra car, or whatever it is. Keeping up with the Joneses. Well, sort of, except retired people are older, have less hair, dumb clothes, or whatever picture we have in our head when we're young. With the nudge, we can have that future priority that we don't think of all the time, necessarily when we're younger. 
we can have that addressed and taken care of. So isn't there some reason to be concerned about this kind of choice architecture? I mean, isn't there? Isn't there some? How do I grow effectively about this? How do I keep my freedom of choice? Could you show me how much of a doubting Thomas I am? Sure, we'll call it future blindness. That could be created by not taking the right action now. Well, of course, but that's something I would not expect you to ever admit. You're here to tell me why I should do good things. You're the one facing doubting Thomas, after all. But we're going to do good things. We're all in this group going to do good things. And you, doubting Thomas, can do your best to try to talk us out of it. But it's not going to happen. We're going to do good things. Yeah, right. I would bet almost nobody does the right thing. Well, you can bet that. And there might be some payoff some way. But it's not a good bet. Not in my opinion. I think betting on people and betting on them doing the right thing is the right way to go. Encouraging them and helping them to do the right thing is the absolute way to go. It's the best to avoid, what did I call it? Future blindness. That's it. Anything else? Well, of course, there are always competing opportunities for everybody. I mean, think about it. What if money wasn't my thing? Well, sure. You could be more concerned about your physical fitness or your love life or your job or who knows, lots of different things. All of them are good and important. They're just different. Yeah, right. Like, like everybody wants money, right? So how is this important? To start, probably yes, and that's fine. Wanting financial success, however you define that, is a very real thing. Solving it with your attitude is without a doubt the most important thing that could ever happen in your life. Yeah, well, I don't know about the most important thing. That's relative. Yeah, that is important to the person that we're talking to. What a financial person would call the client. As an aside, to me, you're not a client. You're not a thing. You're a person and you have individual important priorities. We're going to focus on catering to that while making them successful, making it all successful. Yeah, I've heard people say all kinds of stuff like that, but it's just another competing opportunity. I just know it is. We'll see. Okay, now one of the things that people are probably interested in is whether or not there are any possibilities for disinformation or other complexities. Disinformation is anything on any topic that purports to be relevant information, but is actually attempting to get you to believe in something that you might not believe otherwise. Whatever that thing is, it can be a misdirection or it can be an outright lie. In this case, we'll say it was a lie. The lie would be that you're going to have more money taken out of your paycheck by committing to this 401k plan, for example, than you're going to reap in the long run. And it'll hurt and you won't be able to buy groceries. Yeah, and all sorts of down the rabbit hole piling on top of each other things. That's kind of what disinformation is all about. Doesn't that make it more complex? Yes, and it doesn't have to be. Now, how does this compare? Imagine having a coach who sees that you are on the verge of making something really good happen. Good for yourself and maybe also for your team. With your consent and understanding, that coach pushes you to exceed what you previously thought you could do. That is the same thing as having a C goal, which is another topic we'll come to right here. A goals, B goals, and C goals. Which are probably still vague. Well, maybe, but that's the start of how we're going to compare. A goals, B goals, and C goals specific ones. What do I mean by specific? I'm pretty sure you mean not vague. Yeah, and if you want more money, you have to be specific. I mean, more money is one dollar more than you're making now, but one dollar more is probably not what you have in mind. It's an improvement, but it could be better. You make it better by setting goals and setting big ones. Earl Nightingale tells us that we don't get into trouble trying to reach goals, we could do that just fine. No, we get into trouble when we do not set goals. The really cool thing is, once you're used to it, more specific is actually simpler. And as I said at the top, this podcast is getting simpler too. All thanks to you. I call on Doubting Thomas to tell you what you must remember. Remember, all you need to do is practice, after which you'll get good. Gracias por escuchar. A la prochaine. You're here in the Simple Success Podcast, where you've landed well in your search for financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. We come to you on a regular basis with podcasts, webinars, and masterclasses, together aimed at freeing you from the change that the financial industry puts on all of us. Most of us don't even know what those changes are, and in this spirit, we're not going to try to solve problems that people don't even know they have. No, instead, let's go up to common ground here. We can overcome, and we will do so. 
Join me for the ride of your life in a good way. This podcast and our other podcasts are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King John C. Brandy, fact checker Abraham Lincoln, French consultant Virginia Mitchell, media expert Faber Abasi Ike, psychologist Sigmund Freud, rabbit hole advisor Dr. Marg Parrott, sound designer Guglielmo Marconi, Spanish consultant Cameron J.K. Brandy, videographer Alfred Hitchcock, audio props go to Les Paul, and inspiration to Napoleon Hill, Earl Nightingale, and Bob Proctor. We also have a website, and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio, or text message. But of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to actually get links and stuff. I mean, I could read the URLs where you can subscribe, support, or leave one of those video or audio or text messages, but you really don't want me to do that. And those explicit, clickable links are in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on Podmatch, where we consider guests as well as consider guesting on other people's pods. And really, finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams, both on freesound.org. 